Hi, this is Dr. Ben Morrill. Welcome to episode 67 of Reptile Genetics Weekly. Glad to have you here. We've got some more uh, cool, interesting information. It might be a, a shorter episode this time, but one that I think a lot of you will find interesting. Um, but first of all, as always, we'll talk about results and when they're coming out to all you, all of you that are making orders. And uh, it's a, once again, exciting time of the year with baby season. Um, so we are sending fast results out pretty much every day this week. And then next week, um, we actually are going to be down a person. Ali is going to be on vacation. So next week, uh, we may need an additional day or two. So instead of a one to two day turnaround for fast tests next week, it might be more like a three to four day turnaround. Um, so be patient with us, but we'll, uh, we'll be as fast as we can without Ali for that week. Um, but yeah, other than that, the normal one to two day turnaround for fast tests and three to five business days for sex determination. And then we will have another panel run going uh, that will probably have results, not the end of this week, but the end of next week. And on that, we're also going to be testing out some new tests that uh, we we may finally get some things working. We've been working on for a while, but can't announce that this week because we don't have results back yet. But we do have some some new hits we're, ch we're testing. So we're excited about that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have for uh, updates. Kayla, how are you doing? Hey, Ben, I'm doing well. Glad to be here as always. Um, I'm really got my fingers crossed for this next couple of hits because they should be some really cool ones. Yeah. I have a little insider info on that, but we can't tell yet because we want to make sure that these hits are right and they actually come back with the accuracy we like to see. So, yeah. um, so fingers crossed, this is the right one. Um, Yes. But yeah, and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get, in, get into some business. Um, for those who haven't heard the news, we do have black pastel, uh, Barnhart black pastel test and the regular pastel um, that's available both on Clutch and Morph Market now. Um, so be sure to take advantage of that, um, especially if you've had bas pastel black pastel in your collection and want to test to see if that is the Barnhart li line or not. Um, Yes, and they are not part of the big panel yet, the 30 morph panel, but uh, that's something we're working toward to get them and ACID uh, added on. Um, and I guess TSK, Azanthic, those ones aren't on the, the big panel yet, but we're working on that. So they'll get there. I know those are a couple that will be helpful for those of you that are doing full panels. So we're working on that. For sure. That panel test keeps getting more and more valuable each time we add more tests onto it. So that's yeah. exciting. It's like it must be like Christmas to get all those results back after a good <laughs> panel test. Um, so if you've gotten those before, you should like, you know, like tag us in social media, see what you found out, because that's that's super fun. Um, and of course, uh, you know, we're, we always have deals for bulk ordering. Um, we like to make sure that we take care of y'all during baby season. Um, so if you're ordering like 25 or more tests, uh, shoot us an email, let us know um, what you want to test for, and maybe we can get you an even better discount than what we have on uh, Morph Market or Clutch. Um, but yeah, that's, I think that's just all, that's all the business that we have to deal with today. Let's get yeah, to our special now, guest. Yeah, we get to the fun stuff now. So uh, first of all, we had some results come through this week and uh, they, they were very interesting. So mm -hmm. I had a, a test come through that was for a puzzle test, and it was a 66% pos het puzzle that mm -hmm. was being tested to find out for sure if it was het for puzzle. Um, and then uh, with the, the person that sent it in said that it was from a clown combo, and it came out to be homozygous for puzzle. So that was the first one that, that we've tested that was homozygous for both puzzle and clown. Ooh. So I reached out to that customer and, and I also did run the test for clown the next day and it did test homozygous for both. Um, so, yeah, we have uh, if you want to go to the first slide, we've got um, vision of ball python. This is Yoshi mm -hmm. in Japan that sent this uh, this sample in. And this is what the animal looks like now. And uh, the very cool thing uh, with this is we have a chance to have Justin Kabelka on with us as well as we're talking about puzzle slash cryptic and clown things. And also he's the one that hatched out this animal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hi, Justin. Hey, so what a coincidence to be talking about this so soon after discussing that clutch of cryptic puzzles. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, <laughs> welcome back. more information, of course, um, this kind of 
it's it's in a way it's surprising in a way it's not this is this is one of the animals that we made from a double head to double head pairing um mm-hmm. i want to say it was back in 2020 yeah 2022 um yeah and this is the baby as a hatchling of course we didn't have a puzzle test back then mm-hmm. uh, because you guys weren't getting your act together yet <laughs> <laughs> we're trying so, yeah no, but no, it's how awesome is that? So this one went to Yoshi in Japan mm-hmm. and came back surprisingly or unsurprisingly as a visual puzzle. Wow. And what it, a, it is funky looking for just a leopard clown. And I knew that, but yeah. uh, oh, maybe it's just head puzzle influence. Um, I've always wondered if maybe some of these clowns we're making from these clutches could be visuals and they just weren't obvious enough and we were selling them. Um, yeah. Or is there anything yeah. like from somebody who has no ball python, uh, a very, a very little ball python chop since I'm a colubrid person. Is there anything on this animal that says it's weird for a leopard clown? Like what are you seeing through yeah. your eyes? It's a softer, um, it's a softer pattern. The, the usually mm-hmm. the blacks are more just like, um, hard on it. These, you can see it almost looks a little bit melted, a little fuzzy around the edges. That's a little unique. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It has a little bit of a unique head stamp. Usually the leopard clown's head stamp is less pronounced than that. Um, mm-hmm. And overall, it's a little bit more orange. That's, yeah. that's, probably, that's what I would say I saw in the mm-hmm. animal at the time. And I thought, mm-hmm. oh, it's probably going to be a puzzle um, based on that. But it's a little untypical. Of course, leopard clowns are very variable as well. But yeah. That's seen in this animal. How cool. And it grew up to be very pretty, even when like those colors cooled down. I, I really mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, I went through the kind of standard um, leopard clown transformation where it mm-hmm. kind of hands out or just the clown transformation in general. Yeah. Uh, but we have some other pictures here that I think would be pretty informative. Um, if we continue yeah. on the slides here, I sent these in. So these are two um, fire leopard clowns that came from the, exactly the same pairing on different years. Um, mm-hmm. and both of these, I thought, you know, these are really funky looking leopard clowns. And so what if they're homozygous puzzle, you know, we've done so many pairings over the years. We've never hit one. That was obvious to me. That was mm-hmm. a, a clown puzzle. Um, so I was just really, I was really, you know, <laughs> grasping at straws. Like maybe we're missing it. Maybe these are homozygous. And so these two animals, we grew them all the way up to adults. They were females. So it took a while. Mm-hmm. Um, but the one on the left, we sent it both of these sheds to you, you guys at RGI, to see if they were visual, homozygous puzzle, or if they were hats, or, or you know, technically they were 66% hat. The one on the left proved not to be hat puzzle at all. Hmm. So it was a 66% hat that did not prove to be hat. And we actually got a clutch from it that also we bred it to a puzzle, no, no visual puzzle, so confirmed. The one on the right, I thought for sure that one could be homozygous puzzle, but it came back as a het. So that is a own het puzzle, but really funky looking in a lot of the same ways that the visual came back as. So nothing, I'm not inferring anything by this except for showing you guys what I've seen and what what the other animals have looked like and what they proved to be. Interesting. That is crazy. So do you, obviously it's a small sample size, but whether there's one or two copies of puzzle there, you think that adds some orange then? I'm assuming that maybe at least a single, the het version does look more orange. And then of course we have the homozygous version from the previous pictures who looked a little bit more orange. So there may be some aspect to it. Hmm. Um, yeah. And then I think the next picture is one more male and this one was sent off. And this one has um, proven for the person I sold it to, to have at least, at least het puzzle. Hmm. I don't think he's tested or anything, but it's produced puzzles, but he's not bred it to a homozygous puzzle to really give you those for sure. You know, if they were 100% puzzles from a homozygous, then we know. But this also, for a pastel leopard clown, this looks a lot of oranges in it. Usually they're much more pale yellow. Um, but the pattern, not not that different. I mean, you wouldn't pick it out of a huge lineup and say, oh, that one's definitely different. It, but it is a little bit odd. Yeah. So, yeah. A little more info to start to uh, build the case for what's going on in this project. Yeah. Uh, so to That's kind cool. of piggyback off of 
what what we talked about the last time you were on with the cryptics um you know that's it's definitely interesting because you know we kind of talked about two maybe uh, ideas of what could be happening one would be a, a translocation and the other one would be some kind of epistasis and in this case where we know for sure we can get a homozygous clown and homozygous puzzle in the same animal we also know from lots and lots of breeding that clown and cryptic are right by each other mm -hmm. um you know i i think that's pretty good uh, indication we're not dealing with a translocation and i think that that epistasis is more likely and the uh, i think as more testing is done we'll find out that for whatever reason it's it's just kind of hard to pick out the the homozygous double homozygous animals that's so just uh mm -hmm. In this case, it kind of even seems like, you know, picking out a het versus homozygous, you know, they're they're both a little more orange and a little cooler. But even that one there, you know, that that double picture, the top picture there, like oh, you said, yeah. it's kind of funky looking, but it was negative. So right. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah, gonna be very know. difficult. Yeah, double negative. We bred it and we tested it. Same good news is the same results from both the test and the breeding. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, also there's Josh who, with Josh Jackie Reptiles. I want to give him a shout out. He just made an animal that potentially is a homozygous clown puzzle, and it looks pretty odd. I'm hoping he'll send in a shed to you guys, too. That would yeah. be cool. I'll reach out to him. But it looks, I mean, it didn't look like a puzzle. It looked like a clown. But it looked like a clown that had something else going on for sure. Mm. For sure. So we'll get some maybe hopes and feedback on that. And uh you know, just keep adding to the repertoire of, of all this information we're gathering. Yeah. Cool. Uh, that just goes to show, you know, like the genetics, like we can say, eventually determine, you know, what the genetics are, but that can't tell us what it's going to look like. Right. Um, Cause that a lot of that artistry and, you know, being able to like pick it out of a bunch of different animals ultimately comes down to, you know, what we're seeing as breeders. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. that's, that's really cool. And thankfully having testing to be able to let us know if the genotype matches what we think we're seeing in the phenotype. Yes. And yes. certainly uh, make that faster. We can make good, good uh, conclusions faster instead of having to wait two or three years or four years to breed females. That we need yes. To. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks again for coming on again. That's, that's an interesting story that I'm sure we'll have more more to talk about that's so crazy that there would be that interaction when they're very clearly on different chromosomes and yeah they're very different where, too they're very yeah. different looking how could they be smashed together and not look crazy mm -hmm. I, I still hope maybe we're all wrong about this i know some people are really <laughs> invested in this project and i have been very invested in this project for many years i've kind of come to some some sort of acceptance but i would love to be proved wrong that uh maybe it's still out there it's like it's like a uh, bigfoot it's still out there <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and in some certain combination maybe it, it tricks it out really quick right. cool. i think that's still entirely possible mm -hmm. yeah. oh yeah definitely yeah I, I mean if you if you know of any other projects that do similar things where you're just kind of like it should be a really cool combo and then you just get something kind of normal looking like uh, if you if you know of any similar ones, you know, oh, post that in the spider. comments. Yeah, but, yeah, you guys do it too. Yeah, blackhead spider is yeah. one. That oh really yeah. Find. It like for some reason they cancel each other out. It doesn't look like either oh. of them. Yep. Oh. oh. But for the most part, generally speaking, things are somewhat as expected, which is nice. Yeah. Uh. That's there's something to be said about that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, good stuff. Um, it's always good to have you on, Justin. Um, thank you both. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And our um, shed donor shout out this week is for Multimorph Exotics. Um, they are a smaller breeder that has been um, working with not just ball pythons, but toke geckos. And they actually have some isopods, uh, isopods listed on Morph Market, which I didn't realize was a thing for Morph Market. So that makes me excited as an isopod person. But um, they've got monitors and uh, tricolor hogs, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, and they've been contributing some of their um, banana, let's see, a banana and cinnamon sheds to us as well to help contribute to our work. So 
thanks so much, Multimorph Exotics. Um, and uh, we'll post their link tree in our description as well. Yes. So. And as we've said many times, we literally cannot do this without you, all of you. Thank you so much. Yes. So thank you all. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I think that's our uh, everything we've got today. So y'all got any, anything else before we call it a wrap? That's it. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you guys. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, share with your other uh, snake nerd friends and reptile nerds. Um, and yeah, I guess we'll see you next time. Later guys. Outro in three, two, one. Thank <laughs> you.